Thank you all for joining Dr. Harstrom and our patient Elvato today. If you're experiencing chronic pain and you haven't found relief with other pain management treatment options, you're in the right place. There will be a live Q&A with Dr. Harstrom at the end of the event to answer any questions you have. So if any time you do have a question, just please use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen. Next slide. Before I hand it over to Dr. Harstrom, I wanted to quickly address insurance coverage and availability for this treatment option. So great news. This treatment option is covered by all major insurance plans, including Medicare, Medicaid, and TRICARE. And it's offered by thousands of physicians nationwide. We'll provide instructions on how you can find the physician in your area after the event. Next slide. I'm excited to introduce Dr. Harstrom. She practices pain management in the surrounding Seattle, Washington state area, and has taken the time today to share her expertise about chronic pain, treatment options, and answer your questions. She is double board certified as an anesthesiologist and interventional pain specialist. She has spent several years working with spinal cord stimulators, a treatment option you'll learn about today, and she co-authored a landmark study supporting high frequency stimulation which you'll also learn more about today. Dr. Harstrom focuses on a comprehensive approach to pain management care for her patients. Her goal is to improve pain, functionality, and to see her patients return to the activities they loved before they were limited by chronic pain. Thank you, Dr. Harstrom, for being our host today. And with that, I'll hand it over to you. Thank you so much, Kayla, for the wonderful presentation. And thank you, Nevro, for inviting me to host today. I am so excited to be here to tell you all about the HFX spinal cord stimulation technology, how it is superior to other spinal cord stimulators and how it can benefit you in your life. So thank you so much for joining. And we're gonna have a great, great seminar. We're gonna talk to my patient Elvado as well. He will give his perspective of how HFX spinal cord stimulation has changed his life. Uh, we can uh, continue to the next slide, please. So first I wanna say that you are not alone. There are so many patients out there, um, over 50 million Americans uh, are estimated to be suffering from chronic pain. Now, this is not something that, um, you know, it changes your life, but it changes things like your relationship with people, your hobbies, your career perhaps. Often I have patients coming into my office and telling me how it has changed their independence, how it's difficult for them to go to the grocery store, to walk their dogs, to enjoy time with family. Uh, it makes them depressed. They have anxiety. They can't enjoy those things that they used to enjoy in life. And they're looking for a solution. And one of the solutions we have is the spinal cord stimulator, HFX. So let's move forward. So we are here to help you. And as I mentioned, Elvado, one of my patients will join us later. He was a patient who uh, had a car accident and in um, 92 and suffered severe back pain after that. Um, not only his back, but also in his legs. And he ended up having a surgery in 2013 that helped him some, but didn't really relieve all his pain and his symptoms in his leg. So we're gonna hear about him, but I also wanna point out that over the past 10 years, we have helped over 90,000 people around the world with the HFX technology. Next slide. So we wanna talk a little bit about different kind of chronic pain types too. So first of all, pain is a way of the uh, brain to interpret um, sensory information from the body. The information is sent through signals in the spinal cord and reaches the brain and tells the brain if there's something wrong with the body. Sometimes these signals are normal and is a way for us to understand that something abnormal is going on, like you're putting your hand over the fire and you need to remove the hand. And sometimes these signals become abnormal and malfunctioning basically. So you can have acute pain. That's the kind of pain that you often experience after surgery or maybe a trauma. That pain will normally go away on its own. It's short lived and it will respond to normal treatment. 
But then we have this maladaptive pain, the chronic pain that lasts for longer than three months and most often longer than six months. And it continues to send these abnormal pain signals to the brain that it gets misinterpreted that there's something wrong with the body when sometimes there's not or sometimes there is, but the signaling is really the problem here. Now we have different kinds of pain. We have mechanical pain and we have nerve pain. Mechanical pain is related to the bones, the muscles, um, the ligaments, the tendons. That could be a uh, osteoarthritis of your knee, for example, bone on bone, when you're walking causes mechanical pain. It's often relieved when you're at rest, but it's often related to movement and it's related to structural aspects of your body. Now, nerve pain is a little bit different. So another word for it's called neuropathic pain that is in, involves a nerve. So that could be your sciatica, your compression of a nerve in your lumbar spine, like a radiculopathy that can also be taking place in your neck. Um, or it could be something not like neuropathy of your feet from diabetes, for example. That is damage to nerves that are irreversible most of the time. And that's the kind of pain that um, HFX spinal cord stimulation works the best for. It's often perceived as burning, um, electrical, tingling, numbing, um, and overall pretty excruciating. So we're gonna talk a little bit more about this later. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, so when we talk about chronic pain, we often have an algorithm, meaning that we start at one point and then we move to more like a very conservative point and then we start to move towards more invasive uh, procedures or um, surgeries, et cetera. So I think most of you here on this webinar has probably had some kind of experience with over-the-counter medications like Tylenol or ibuprofen. That's very, that's kind of the starting point for most pain management, I would say. You probably have had some lifestyle changes. Maybe you started exercising more, stretching, maybe lost some weight or changed your diet, or even did something like massage therapy, acupuncture, but it did not really help your pain. Now, the next step is probably that you got involved with a physician who, who referred you to physical therapy. You may have tried that for a long period of time and noticed some improvement or no improvement or even worse pain. And then maybe you tried some nerve blocks, maybe you had an epidural, maybe you did try the intense unit, which is a kind of a superficial stimulation of the muscles and the, the, the tissue, uh, but doesn't go very deep. And some of you may even had to resort to using opioid medications or gabapentin or Lyrica or pregabalin, one of those medications. And you may have experienced side effects with them. I mean, you may feel like it's no longer working and you know that there's also a lot of um, complications that comes with using medications long-term. So at this point, you may have resorted to maybe trying something more invasive. Um, they could be either something like surgery, maybe a pain pump with pain medications getting sent into your, um, close to your spinal cord, or you may wanna think about something like a spinal cord stimulator. So next slide, please. So what is a spinal cord stimulator? What is HFX? So let's break it down a little bit. So HFX, is a high frequency 10,000 Hertz stimulator. That's the only stimulator on the market that can do 10,000. Uh, it's a non-drug, it's FDA approved, and it's a treatment option for those with long-term chronic pain, looking for long-term chronic pain relief. The, uh, the duration of the pain, and when we're talking about um, installing something like this would be more than six months. So that's when we talk about the chronic pain. So how does it work? So it safely blocks the signals, the pain signals, um, by sending out impulses to the spinal cord. Um, and the pain signals that would normally travel to your brain are disrupted or modulated, so they don't reach the brain. So you kind of cut off the signaling pathway for those signals to uh, reach the target, the brain is processing pain. So you're not really fixing the problem, but you are, you are making sure that the signals is not interpreted as pain. So 
Um, we do know that this is a, a good device that can last for more than 10 years. So once it's implanted, it can stay with you for a long time and is also MRI safe, which is very important because you may want to have MRIs for other body parts in the future than the current body part that we're treating. Okay. Next slide, please. So what are the reasons that patients choose uh, something like a spinal cord stimulator or HFX? Now, it is proven to be successful in many patients who have tried other options or failed. So when medications are no longer beneficial or you had that surgery that didn't work for you, this could be your next option. It is very effective and it's also a a treatment option for those that are not interested in surgery. So a lot of patients, they don't really want that long recovery period of time after. They don't want to stay in hospital for several days after surgery. They just want something that it's more directed towards the pain, but less invasive. It is drug-free, so you don't have to worry about any side effects from medications that you may have experienced before. And one of the beautiful things about it is that you can get to try it for a period of time. You get a trial like a test run with a device that usually lasts for about a week. So you know if it's gonna work for your pain before you commit to it, which is fantastic. And it's safe. So safety is very, very important to physicians because we don't wanna do anything to cause any harm, right? So uh, we have tried this, of course, we have done many clinical studies and it has proven to be very effective and very safe. Next slide, please. So what does it look like? So you have a little picture here, but I can also show you what an actual battery looks like. And this is the size, if I hold it up against my hands, so you can see this is the battery, the pulse generator device, okay? And it comes attached with a lead. So that lead looks like this, it has little contacts uh, that is what stimulates in the epidural space. So it doesn't sit on the spinal cord, it sits in the space just superficial to it. So it sends these impulses to the cord uh, pain-free and you can't even feel it actually. There is no sensation of the stimulation in that area. Um, it gets um, introduced there um, and then the, um, the little device gets implanted usually about here. So if this is the spine, you would have the implantation kind of in your low back um, or in your buttocks area. And so it's very small. The wire, the little lead is very flexible. It's not gonna cause any damage to anything in that area. And it kind of moves with you as you move. So you're not gonna have the sensation of having any, anything inside you really. Okay, next slide. So this is a question that most of my patients ask me when I suggest something like this. Is it covered by my insurance? And yes, it is. Uh, like Kayla mentioned earlier, most large insurers in this country uh, will cover this. There are some very, very few exceptions. And that's why it's good to have a conversation with your physician if your insurance for some reason would not cover it. But I don't see that very often in my practice. Majority of my patients have access to this kind of technology. And that includes VA patients too. A lot of my patients are VA patients. So I'm very happy to be able to offer this to almost everybody out there. Next slide. All right, so who's a good candidate? We have touched base on this a little bit earlier, uh, but most pain, the best pain to that will respond to this technology, I would say, is the one that is nerve related. So the neuropathic one. So that's the one that's burning, shooting, electrical, tingling with some numbness, perhaps that could be in your, um, in your arm, your leg, in your low back. Um, many patients come in and say, I have sciatica. This is a perfect treatment for them. This is perfect for any radiculopathy, meaning that a nerve is compressed in your low back or in your neck. Uh, this is great for patient with neuropathy. If you have diabetes or diabetic neuropathy, this is a fantastic FDA approved um, device for that. 
Um, it's usually we say that the pain has to be located in the back or the limbs or the trunk, but there are some exceptions too to that. And I wanted to talk to your doctor about that because it might be that your pain, even though it's, it's not in this location, would also be a good responder. I think we um, jump back a slide here if we can move forward again. There we go, yeah. And of course, you should have had at least tried other treatments. This is um, a minimally invasive procedure, but we still wanna see that you have tried some conservative alternatives before. Um, that may include medication, physical therapy, maybe some injections. Um, that's just to make sure that we don't jump to a big gun before we tried smaller things first. Okay, next slide. So he's not a good candidate. So that would be the person with acute pain, somebody who just recently had an injury or a strain that will most likely in most circumstances that will recover or heal itself. And you would not need something like a spinal cord stimulator. However, if that pain later progress and you, 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 you're still in pain after six months and you've done all the conservative things, then that may change of course. If your pain is related to bone or tissue or muscle, this is probably not the best treatment for you. Um, and if you have arthritis or fibromyalgia, it's, I would say, you know, there could be a combination of things going on. You could have arthritis and you could have a nerve pain and then you may qualify or you can have fibromyalgia and a radiculopathy and then you may qualify, but just to treat alone, Fibromyalgia is a, a disease of the central nervous system. So it's kind of a centralized pain. Um, you're hypersensitive to certain things and this kind of technology can't really target that. Next slide. All right, so I mentioned before that this is clinically proven um, and that is very important. There's been multiple studies done on spinal cord stimulation in general. But there was one in particular that was very successful showing that HFX had a high impact, a fantastic impact on patients' pain. So we looked at back pain and we looked at leg pain. We looked at average pain scores. So most patients started off somewhere around 7.4 or in the leg pain group around 7.1. And after HFX was implanted, um, there was such a incredible decrease in pain that they could say that we're now landing somewhere around 2.4. This study was actually conducted by my uh, mentor, Dr. Caprol, who's um, very much involved in neuromodulation. And we have done multiple studies after this one that was published in 2016 that has continued to um, show evidence that HFX is not only very effective, but also superior to other spinal cord stimulation that's on the market. Next. So what does it mean to, um, to have better quality of life after spinal cord stimulation implantation? So you will notice that you have more independence. Um, I had a patient today who was telling me that she was now able to do her gardening again. She was able to get down on her knees and, and do things in her yard that she loves. Uh, you will have improved sleep. That's one of the first things I see. And already doing that seven day trial, uh, will there be many patients that tell me that they slept a full night for the first time in many years. Now sitting, standing, walking, those are things that we see. Um, I also had another patient who told me that she felt like she could stand more upright. She had a grandson who was 6'2", six, six and he was telling her that, Granny, you look so much taller. What happened to you? So it does affect a lot of aspects, even your posture. And hopefully we will have also an improved social life. You'll be able to go to that birthday party that you were missing out on last year, perhaps. You'll be able to uh, enjoy your friends and family in a different way than we used to while suffering from chronic pain. Next. So this is actually in my own practice, um, the numbers that um, I can present. So, you know, it's very, it's a little bit individual, but um, I have very good, uh, good outcomes with HFX in particular. 
95% uh, of my patients um, have documented that they have achieved pain relief. Um, 83% had improvements in functionality, which is, you know, almost the most important thing to me is to see that patients are more functional in life. So they can do those things that they were not able to do before. 69% uh, reported that they had improvement in sleep and 55% had decrease in medication use. And in my practice, medication use often uh, involves medications like gabapentin, um, Lyrica, uh, maybe opioid medications, but also sometimes just something like ibuprofen. So patients that were taking those before um, have seen a 55% decrease in medication use. Yeah. Okay, next slide. All right, so how does this compare to other options? So first we have to talk a little bit about the other options, what that, what that entails. So we call that traditional uh, spinal cord stimulation, which means that it's um, it's it's been around since the since 1960. This is not a new technology. This has been been here for a while. Uh, but in the past, we used technology that would basically replace the painful sensation with a tingling sensation, like we call a paresthesia. So instead of having pain, you would feel like a tingling in that area. And for some patients, that's okay, and they even liked it. Other patients um, just felt uncomfortable, actually had more pain with a tingling sensation. So what this device can do, the HFX, is that it can achieve the same level of pain relief or better without having that tingling sensation. It can also customize its programming around your specific needs. So if you need a combination, like pairing of different kinds of frequency, it can do that too. And remember, HFX stands for 10,000 Hertz frequency, meaning that it it stimulates very, very quickly. Um, and that's why you don't really have to, you don't have to feel it because it's so quick. And it's the only one on the market that has the pattern on that particular frequency. So that's a huge thing. They can also do everything else that all the other stimulators can do, but it has that ability to do the 10,000. None of the other companies can go above 1500. So that's a huge difference. And of course we guarantee the 10 plus um, battery life, 10, year, 10 plus years, I should say. So the uh, high frequency, the low frequency, and the pairing of the both or other frequency and stimulation options is what makes this device so unique and there's nothing else on the market. Okay, next slide. So this was another study that was also done um, by Dr. Caprol that looked at comparing, well, actually it's the same study, but it's just different numbers we're looking at. So we're looking at traditional spinal cord stimulation. So there was two groups of patients. One group got the traditional one and one group got the HFX. And you can see here clearly how the, the pain relief, the significant pain relief number, so then the percentage of patients that received at least 50% of a relief, you can see how that differs. So seven, 76% percent in HFX group compared to 70, sorry, to uh, 47. So that's why we know that HFX is the better option. Okay, next slide. So how do you get started? How do you, how do you get to, to come to, um, you know, to, to get to try this device, right? So you want to see if you qualify. So you want to fill out an assessment at neverhfx.com. You want to, at the same website, also find a trained doctor who is specifically know this technology and know uh, how to use this. And that's easy because you just put in your zip code and they would, the closest doctor will pop up. And then you want to try it out. So we talked about that test run with a trial, and that's what we're going to talk about next. So let's move to the next slide. Right, so do you qualify? So the questions that the doctor is gonna ask you is what type of pain are you experiencing? Do you have that neuropathic pain that we're looking for that is very well targeted with this? How long have you had your pain for? Is it more than six months? How severe is your pain? What other things have you tried? Uh, Where's the location of your pain? Will this be an area that we can cover? And they wanna know that you've done other treatments and how you responded to those and if you're ready to move forward with this device. So go to neverhfx.com and take the assessment. Next slide. 
So you want to see an HFX trained doctor. So you go to their find a physician search tool and the doctor will meet with you. They will evaluate you. You will have a consultation where you can answer. You can ask questions they can answer. Um, and you want to also discuss that insurance question, which, as I said, it's usually not a big issue at all, but you want to make sure that it's covered, of course. And there are many physicians you see on this map here. There's so many physicians out there. Um, I'm one of, of several in Washington state and all over the country, you can find a physician that can help you. Next. So we talk, we're gonna talk about that trial a little bit. So you have those five to seven days where you get to test the device out. So you can see the a picture there of what the little um, device looks like when you get the test trial. So it's a little bit different if you compare this to this. This will be externalized. It will sit under your clothes on your side usually, and it will be connected to the leads um, that will enter the epidural space. The procedure itself is not much different than just an epidural stair injection. So it's very quick, minimally invasive. It's outpatient. You may get um, either some uh, IV sedation just to keep you comfortable, take the edge off a little bit, or even just some Valium is usually what most of my patients receive. Um, it will be um, a good time for you to try different programs. You get a little remote, looks like this with five different programs. You will work with your rep from the company who will on a daily basis contact you, make sure that you stay on track, that you try to correct programs, that you work through the algorithms to get to that perfect pain relief. So after seven days, you should know if this will help you or not. You will have a couple of restrictions, but it kind of minimal, just no heavy lifting, no bending or twisting in your spine, just for the leads that are Kind of flexible to not move too much during that trial. Otherwise, it's just very straightforward, uh, not very easy procedure. Um, and like I said, it's outpatient, so no hospital stay or anything. Usually it takes about 20, 30 minutes to complete. So it's very quick as well. Okay, next. So now we got to get to the implant. So if you receive more than 50% relief during that trial period, and you notice that you had increased functionality because remember that's important too. It's not only about pain scores that are arbitrary. We also want to see what can you do now that you were not able to do before. So I always ask my patients about a few things that they would love to do that they're not able to. And then I want them to try that out while they have that uh, those seven days uh, trial period. Now, if you do qualify, usually the implant will take place about a month after your um, you remove the leads because they come out. So once you have the seven days, the leads come out, everything will be removed. And then we wait for insurance to give approval. We will schedule you in the OR. And um, that takes just about a month or so. It is also very quick and minimal invasive, the implant procedure. You do get maybe a little bit deeper sedation for this. So usually you, you will be out. You're not gonna remember anything. You're gonna have sedation and, and feel very, wake up very comfortably. Um, but good thing is you don't need any general anesthesia. So for those that have maybe big back surgery and remember the breathing tube and the discomfort afterwards, scratch your throat, this is seldom something that needs any general anesthesia. I have personally, all my patients are done with just sedation. Um, it takes maybe up to two hours. I would say it's probably a little bit shorter than that, like an hour to an hour and a half. And um, the little IPG, as we said, again, this is the, the little device that will sit in your lower back or buttocks, and that will be implanted, so internalized, nothing on your outside of your body, nothing sticking out. It's comfortably gonna sit just under your skin and you will be able to charge it through the skin with another device I'm gonna show you a bit later. There's also very short recovery time. Uh, it takes, you know, the procedure is short. You leave the, the surgical center and um, you go home, you'll have a couple of days maybe with some tenderness of your lower back. Uh, you're probably going to return to see your physician in about 10 days or maybe two weeks or so to take staples out if you have those. And um, the only really recovery time is, I mean, it's, it's not much to talk about, but um, you, may have, you may have some restrictions. Once again, we talk about this, you want the leads to kind of not move or migrate. So you may have to have some precautions just with bending, twisting, and, and those motions. But recovery time for the healing of the incisions that are about, 
as you can see, this is not very big. So this is just going to be just about this size is is very short, very short. So yeah. Okay, next slide. Okay, now we come to the fun part of this presentation. Now we're going to hear from Elvado, who is my patient, um, who had this implanted about a year, year and a half ago. And he has so much information to give you. So we're going to jump straight into Elvado. And welcome, Elvado. I can see you. How are you? Dr. Hallstrom, good afternoon. How are you? I'm doing great. Uh, thank well, you so much for you. joining. I'm so excited to have you share your experience. Well, thank you for inviting me as well as um, hello to the Neville team. And uh, thank you for allowing me to share with, um, with the folks on the webinar today. Yeah. So will you tell me a little bit about what your life was like before you um, had the HFX? What was your pain like after your surgery? Um, after my car accident, I had a, a lot of back issues and whatnot and went through a bunch of things that you mentioned today on the webinar in terms of um, therapy and, 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 and treatment procedures. And uh, the pain got so severe that I finally relented. Um, I'm not much into pain medication. And I, um, I actually went ahead and had back surgery, like you said, in 2013. But um, prior to the actual surgery, um, every three to four months, I was getting cortisone shots. Um, I've tried everything, um, you know, even physical therapy and massages and acupuncture. And... Um, they were only temporary. And I was hoping that the back surgery would have done it. I was a little apprehensive about it, but uh, the pain was so severe that I decided to just go ahead and, and have the back surgery. And yeah, they... it, it, it held up for a few years. It allowed me to do some of the things that I was doing before, but that, as it turned out, unfortunately, unfortunately itself was also temporary. Okay. How did that pain impact your life? Um, I'm a retired Marine, so I'm pretty active, and um, I um, I love to get out there. I, well, prior to the injury, I used to try to get out on the links and, um, you know, play a couple of rounds, if nothing else, go to the driving range and just uh, hit a couple of bucket of balls, and I'm um, very active with my grandkids. Um, I played football when I was in the Marine Corps. As a matter of fact, I was in the Marine Corps football team. So I'm pretty athletic and pretty active and was um, having a good time with my grandkids rolling around, you know, in the backyard and getting on the trampoline and just doing those things um, prior to the, the onset of the severe pain. Mm -hmm. And um, after, the, after the back surgery, I got back to doing some of that. But like I said, I was still limited in certain things. Yeah. How did you decide to move forward with the HFX trial? Um, a friend of mine was a veterinary ophthalmologist and um, she started noticing that my quality of life in, in her words was, um, being, was being affected. So she had um, told me about, there were some procedures out there to look into. So I spoke with my physician and um, they were, they recommended in 2010, 2011 timeframe um, to take a look at, uh, at a device. And um, it was up to the 1500 megahertz um, um, frequency range. And my veterinary ophthalmologist said that there was some new technology coming on the market. And I should, you know, if I could endure the pain, just wait, because the potential for this to be better than what's on the market now was greater. So I trusted her advice, and that's what I did. And um, when I went to the VA hospital, you know, complaining about the pain, they wanted to put me on pain meds. And I told them, look, I don't want any oxy, please. So he said, well, let me give you a low dose well, I took it for a couple of days and decided I'll just put up with the pain. Mm -hmm. And what made me decide to really move forward is one day my, um, our daughter had just had, um, they just had their, their last child, which is what her husband wanted. He finally got his boy. And one day I'm walking down the steps in my house with my grandson in my arms and the pain hit me. And if it were not for the handrail, I don't know how things would have turned out. And that's when I decided I need to get this taken care of. So I told him, look, 
whatever you say, doc, tell me what you do. So that's when they um, outsourced me to, to your clinic. Yes, I remember that day when we met. <laughs> I remember you yes. had you had a couple of goals. We'll talk about those later. Some things that you wanted to do again. So can you tell me a little about the trial itself? How was the procedure for you? Not knowing what to expect. I was a little unsure of how things would turn out. Um, your, your assistant, Vanessa, was really sweet. And she, uh, you know, she calmed me down, if you will. And I went in and... Um, I, to be honest with you, the procedure was not as, as invasive as I thought it was going to be. You guys swabbed my back, numbing pain, um, numbing medication, and all I really felt was your hands manipulating whatever tool you had. And the cool thing is, which I appreciated, which <laughs> you know, it, it assuaged my fears, was you actually um, shifted the monitor so that we could both look at it so I could see exactly what you were doing. And once I was able to see that and recognize that, you know, this wasn't anything that was going to really cause me any, and cause any damage, I felt so much better. And next thing I know, you said, okay, we're done. And that was it, maybe about 10 minutes. So I was um, happy that it was over and really was excited about what could potentially happen, but didn't really have high expectations because of all the pain I had endured throughout the years. Mm -hmm. And I came home. It was a Friday, and um, you know, told my wife about it. And you know, she looked at my back, looked at the backpack, and everything. She goes, "Oh, it's not as bad as I thought." Um, normally, in the mornings when I when I woke up, I would have to stretch for about forty five minutes to an hour just to get out of bed. Um, so the Friday I had the the implant of the of the trial, Saturday morning, I jumped up out of bed and I had to stop myself and wait a second, I don't have to stretch. You gotta be kidding me. It was at that point, less than 24 hours later that I decided I didn't need seven days to tell me how this was gonna work. In less than 24 hours, I knew I wanted to have this, um, this procedure. And uh, my wife asked me how I felt. And when I told her, she says, wow, that's interesting. Well, a couple of days later, we were bypassing each other in the hallway. Um, I was going into the bedroom. She was going to have the kitchen. And she stopped me and she said, you're walking much more upright. I hadn't even noticed that I was walking with a hunch. And she said, wow, you look so much better. You must be feeling better. And that's when it dawned on me, yeah, I really do feel better. And I was so thankful that, you know, the, the, the actual results of the seven day trial was greater than my expectations. Mm, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. I think most patients have similar trial experience as yours. Uh, it's often this very surprise that, wow, I could not believe that something like this exists that could do this to me. So now- My grandson just came down. How are you doing? Good afternoon. He just uh, came. <laughs> just say a quick hi. Yeah, say quick hi. Say, oh, say, hi. Say hi. 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 How you doing, buddy? Thank you, you okay? for tuning in. Okay, Papa's on the call, okay? He'll see you in a few minutes. We'll go ahead and, and play, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, I love you. We'll see you later, okay? Okay, buddy, thanks. I'm sorry. He, um, we no, got, that's okay. We picked him up from school, and he just had something to eat, and he's, I'm his buddy. Yeah, <laughs> so, I love that. <laughs> he's always, as a matter of fact, I told him to leave. He's over in the corner watching, so... You know, yeah. when here, you know, we hang out together. We do a lot of things together. And yeah, uh, I know that was that was one of the goals. Yes. I remember you telling me um, that yes. you wanted to be able to play baseball with with him. Are you able to play baseball with him? He's got his glove outside right now. Uh -huh. so he's in the Are you going out after the this ball, call, but, maybe? <laughs> yeah, I have to I have to teach him how to be a little more accurate because he has me running all over the place. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, we I want to say after the trial, you, you moved forward with the, the implant pretty quickly, I remember. So how yes. was that experience? How was the was there any discomfort involved that you remember at all? No, I was disappointed because I couldn't I couldn't get in the next day. So yeah, I know. I wanted to have, the, as you know, I, I could call it a Dr. H. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but we had to wait for the VA to give the final authorization. And once they did, you guys were very quick in getting me uh, an appointment and, um, you know, went down to the surgical clinic. And um, 
since I had the seven day trial, I, you know, and you, you and your staff did such a wonderful job of explaining to me and making sure that I understood what the procedure was. And even the folks at the surgical clinic, you know, they explained everything and made sure that I was good to go. So I appreciated the redundancy in the information because, you know, especially with anesthesia involved, it made me feel very comfortable. Oh, and I would say the procedure was about maybe a half an hour, if that much. I mean, I went in, we were talking. I'm not, I'm not that I, fast, Alvaro. It's probably about an hour, but yeah. Okay, well, it seemed like <laughs> half an hour to me because I went in, we were talking. Next thing I know, I was being yeah. bandaged up. <laughs> I think I think you left the surgical center about forty-five minutes after you came out of the OR, and okay. uh, yeah, you were you were doing good after your anesthesia, and you went home. How was? Did you have any pain afterwards? Do you remember taking pain medications or anything like that? No. One of the things that I asked if I needed any pain meds, and you guys said no. If anything, maybe some Tylenol or something. But I didn't. I didn't have any pain that was you know. That well, it wasn't even excruciating. There was, there was pain, a little discomfort at the at the surgical site, but that's expected. Yeah. How it was, was, how was, was your recovery afterwards? Uh, my recovery was great. Um, you know, I followed what you all said. You know, followed all the instructions, made sure I didn't do a lot of bending, lifting, and giving the the leads time mm -hmm. to to scar over. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, I just as long as I remembered those things. Everything was fine. My recovery was great. It was Good. a short period. I'm glad to hear that. Now, uh, how could, how would you describe your life now with HFX compared well, to life can, before? Well, I don't know if you can hear, but my grandson is in the corner because <coughs> uh, he's ready to, he's ready to hang out. So yeah. <laughs> you know that has um, the HFX has changed my quality of life which means that the people that I love and care about the most who are around me, they're impacted by that because I am able to be inclusive in everything that, you know, in everything that we do as a family. And, um, you know, the impact that that, again, my grandson is right here, okay? He could be watching cartoons or on his cell phone. He's right here with Papa. So the impact that that has on his upbringing yeah. And the relationship that we have developed, that's going to transcend his entire life. And I, you know, I attribute that to the ability to not just spend time with him, but quality time and being yeah. able to do some of the things that he enjoys doing. We do it, you know, as, as two friends. You know, he tells you I'm his best friend. Oh, that's wonderful. Now, um, is there anything that is difficult with having this device? How's the charging process, for example? The only difficult thing that I ever have with it is remembering that I have a device. I am 65 and I can't do what I used to do, so slow it down. But <laughs> there are no, for me personally, there are no restrictions. The charging process is very simple. Um, they, have, they give you a belt um, that you go ahead and you put the charging pad on. The charging pad is about the size of, of the palm of somebody's hand. So it's not it's nothing that's cumbersome. And um, depending upon um, you know how how used the, the, the device is, you know, it may take you 10 minutes, it 15 minutes. It normally takes me about 15 minutes to charge it. I put the belt on and then I end up doing okay buddy. I'll be with you in a minute. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> He's ready to go. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I, end, I, I end up putting it on for a few minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and it's done until the next day. I typically charge it around the same time every day. So I've gotten into that rhythm. So I don't forget because, mm -hmm. um, again, this thing has made such a, a huge impact on, on me. I want to make sure that I do everything I can to keep it, you know, on a fully operational. Mm -hmm. And and you you have been in contact with the never care team as well. How's your experience with them? Are they helping you out if you have any problems? Um, the team has been great. Um, well, as you know, I'm you know I I really like the, you and your staff and the people there at the office. Um, I was by to see my buddy Ash last week, just to touch bases and say hi. And um, even the folks at the um, 
at the surgical center, you know, I'm the class clown and I was in there making jokes. <laughs> I'm, saying, I'm saying to myself, they're probably thinking, this guy is crazy. He's about <laughs> to have a procedure. He's here making jokes. Well, little did I know that one of your assistants, she was just as much as, of, of a class clown as I was. So we had a wonderful time. Um, folks, after the, uh, the actual implant, I got several calls um, to touch base to see how things were going. And uh, one of the Neville reps, Stephanie, um, you know, it, she checked on me so much that we, we actually established a little relationship in terms of, you know, communications and whatnot. And it wasn't as if this were a rep calling a client or a customer. It was as if, you know, we were two old friends just checking up on each other. And I found that that was a similar experience that I had with um, the folks, not only um, at Neville, but also um, your staff. So, you know, it makes you feel, I know, a bit like family, which is why, as you know, uh, every Christmas, you guys get a little a little Christmas card and a holiday gift from me. So <laughs> I just we do appreciate, appreciate that. It, you know, yeah, we, we do appreciate the hey, gift baskets. <laughs> you're most welcome because of the quality of life uh, my quality of life has increased so much. Um, you know, there's nothing that I can give that will ever repay you all for what the changes that I have experienced. Just being able to, um, again, have a fully active and functional life. And whatever apprehensions I had, um, I look back on it. And, you know, it's normal, I guess, because it's something new. But, um, you know, the entire team made it a lot less um frightful if you will uh, that's, i'm so glad to hear that i i will pass that information on to my team as well Thank now you. do you remember the second thing the second goal you had um when you met with me the first time the, the one goal was to play base baseball with your grandson what was the second yeah. one to get back on the links <laughs> <laughs> get back out there and, and take out my frustration of life yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So golf, right? So play, have, yes, go back have you been able to golf. swing? Have you been able to swing that club? Oh yeah, I go out and hit a couple of buckets of balls now. Um, again, I'm 65 years old, so I can't go out there and 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 do what I used to do, but um, I'm still able to go out there and, and um, you know, go to the putt putt, you know, play putt putt golf and everything with my grandson, and just trying to introduce them to the game. And if he if they take it up, that's fine. If not, well, at least we'll be able to do some things that he likes and we have fun doing it. That's wonderful, Avado. Any last advice for those that are hesitant to try this? There's a natural apprehension in things that we don't know, don't understand, or are fearful of. Um, for me, I had to take a look at what do I want? Do I want to have a situation to where I am not able to enjoy each day, or do I want to have a situation where I can make an impact on, on the people who I love and care about? And, um, you know, I just recommend folks to do their, you know, do whatever research you have to ask as many questions as you need. But the one question that I, I would ask that you ask yourself and be honest with yourself, because sometimes we do a good job of not being honest with ourselves, what type of quality of life would you like to have moving forward? Uh, that was a beautiful finish. Thank you so much, Elvado, for joining us tonight. I think um, you contributed with so much information and your perspective will really you know, resonate. It's, thank you so much also for uh, you know, giving my, my staff such great feedback. So thank you, Elvado. Good. He wants to come and say bye-bye. Say bye-bye. Okay, bye-bye. <laughs> I think we have Kayla coming in next. We're going to do the okay. question and answering section. Next slide. Well, thank you, Vado, so much for sharing your experience. And thank you, Dr. Harsham, for sharing your knowledge. We now like to open the floor to the audience and answer any questions you have about chronic pain and this treatment option. So please just use the Q&A feature at the bottom of your screen to ask your question. And let's just dive right in. Okay, so our first question is, can you get an MRI with this device? Yes, so HFX is MRI safe. Um, you can definitely have an MRI 
Uh, sometimes you want to contact your rep before you have the MRI just to make sure that everything looks okay, but they are definitely MRI safe. Thank you. And what if somebody has herniated discs? Could this potentially help their pain? It can because herniated discs often contact nerves. And remember how we talked about nerve pain being one of the best targets for spinal cord stimulation. So I would say a herniated disc contacting a nerve, if you have neuropathic pain, this would be a good responder to, um, to, to HFX. What are the main contradictions to use this um, device? So that would be if you're not in chronic pain, um, there are not a lot of uh, contraindications to it, but you know, if you don't have that six month period, you obviously wouldn't qualify, uh, but contraindications, not too many. It would be like if you see your physician and they find that your particular chronic pain problem would not be a good responder. Like, as we said, if the step bone on bone um, uh, pain perhaps in your knee that would not be something that would respond very well. Or if you have fibromyalgia, for example, but um, you know, or there's not a lot of contraindications to it really. What about if someone wants to fly, are they able to go through airport security? Yeah, you can definitely walk through airport security. You wouldn't have any problems with that at all. How long does the battery for the implant last? So that's an excellent question, actually, because it's a little bit individual. So remember the different form of frequencies that we use for, to stimulate a different kind of pain problems. Um, there may be that you use the high frequency consistently and the battery will maybe not last as long. But for majority of patients, it lasts for about 10 years. What if someone has pain in multiple areas, like say their low back, their leg, their feet, can one device treat more than one pain location? Yes, absolutely, because we place the leads in a location where we know that most of the pain fibers come together. So we can address all those issues with just putting the leads in one location. Sometimes we have patients that also have, let's say, uh, arm pain. They have both leg pain and arm pain. We do have a way of targeting that as well by putting the leads in kind of opposite directions in the spine. So they cover both in the neck area and in the lower back area. What if someone has diabetic neuropathy? Is this a treatment option for them? Absolutely. This is actually something that was FDA approved. HFX was FDA approved uh, for this particular indication, painful diabetic neuropathy that just happened um, about a year, last summer, I would say. And uh, there was a very good study that came out with over 400 patients that it could demonstrate significant pain relief in about 75 to 80% of those. So that is definitely one of the indications for HFX and where we have demonstrated we have some of the best pain relief with, yeah. You know. What type of doctors usually implant HFX? So often, most commonly would be uh, somebody like myself, a pain medicine specialist. But in certain uh, circumstances, there may be, uh, it may be a spine surgeon. And that is when you have a lot of hardware, for example, in that area where we would usually place the leads. You may end up with a different kind of lead that we call a paddle. I actually have one to show you here too. It just looks a little bit different. And that will be placed by a, a spine surgeon. So they, it's a little bit more um, invasive in terms of um, they kind of have to sh shave off the bone a little bit to get that in. So that's a little bit different process, but majority of pain physicians would probably offer um, this kind of um, technology. It's like a spinal cord stimulation trial. We have a few questions about charging. Um, people would like to just hear a little bit more about how often and how long do patients charge for? Yeah, so I actually also have a charger here to show you. So that looks like this. This is something that would be externalized. So that would be outside of your body, of course. You have the battery or the device inside and it will go on top of each other, but outside of the skin, of course. 
depends once again how much you use it what kind of frequency you're on um different kind of programs so utilizes a little bit more of battery life and then you have to i would say an average most patients charge it probably for about 30 minutes per day but i think elvado said a little bit less so it's it's very very different but uh it's not something that really it's you know affecting your life too much because you can charge this when you you know watching tv or you can even i know Obato has a special belt that he ordered. He just keeps it. He can walk around with it. So it's not really something that will affect your life too much, I would say. If someone has another spinal cord simulator device, mm -hmm. do they still have to do a trial if they wanted to switch to HFX? You don't have to do a trial. Um, I actually do a lot of uh, what we call salvage uh, cases. So I even published a paper I was co-authored together with some other fantastic um, physicians, pain physicians out there on a paper where we compared um, other devices. So you have another company's device, the traditional spinal cord stimulation. And we did in we didn't do any trials. We just swapped the whole system. So we took the, the old device out, put the new one in, and we could demonstrate that even in this situation for patients that had failed other spinal cord stimulation, we could actually do a swap and show that we, in 80% of the cases, we had significant pain relief and reduction in opioid usage from just replacing one traditional stimulator with the HFX system. So I do recommend that if you have a spinal cord stimulator already that is not working well for you, or you don't, you have that unpleasant sensation of that tingling in leg you don't like, go and talk to a physician, an HFX uh, trained physician, and talk to them about how to move forward with um, a salvage or a swap. That could be the whole system. It could be just changing the battery, or it could be involved sometimes a trial as well. Depends a little bit how you wanna, you wanna test it out. I mean, it, we all different. So I can't answer for all physicians out there, but we all do things a little bit differently depending on what we think is right for that particular patient. What determines where you place the leads? So the leads are always placed in, more or less, I would say, in the same location. So we know beforehand where the target's going to be for those impulses that we're going to send to a spinal cord. So that is, that's something that we have already figured out, and that, that, that's where Nevro HFX always goes to the same place. If you have problems with um, neuropathy, we may just change, tweak that a little bit but uh, otherwise it's almost always in the exact same location. So it sits in the epidural space, just about the T8, T9 level. So you can see here the leads, I don't know if you can see it here, but it's a lead sitting about this part, this part, this far up on your spine. So even if you have pain in this portion, let's say lower back, the leads will still always go up here in the thoracic spine. So we know exactly where to place them. I have a couple questions about certain pain conditions and if you know this is a treatment option that can help. So if someone has neck pain, is this an option for them? So um, it depends a little bit on what the ideology of the neck pain is. Um, a lot of neck pain is also associated with arm pain, uh, which is often nerve related. So in that instance, you could have uh, this stimulator and that could help. Uh, if your pain is purely related to arthritis, Maybe not as much, but we do, we have conducted some studies actually with this device that shows some promising data on treating neck pain as well. It's just not being utilized as much for the neck, I would say, as for the lower back, but we're still learning more and we're understanding that we can probably use this for other uh, problems that we were not even aware of in the past. So we are developing new, new studies all the time. We're trying to find new locations to treat and um, that's, uh, that's why I like this company so much as well, because they put a lot of effort into finding new, um, new ways of using the device for different kinds of pain conditions. What about occipital obs pain? Occipital pain, sorry. Yeah, so not, not, not approved. So it's not FDA approved for that. I don't personally use it, this device for that, um, that indication. But there are some studies out there that's been some uh, spinal cord stimulators used for occipital pain, but it's not the most common uh, location, I would say. But it doesn't mean that you can't talk to your uh, HFX doctor, trained doctor, 
and see if they have any any other insight on that. It's it's once again it's a little bit individual, but I don't use it for that indication at all. What about sciatica? Yeah, so sciatica, so the sciatic nerve is like the largest nerve in the body. Um, it's if there's any problems with the sciatic nerve, sometimes it even starts up in the spine area. So it's the the spinal nerve that's the problem, and that, that's more common than that just having problems with the, the actual sciatic nerve. But that is like one of the best indications for this. Uh, a lot of my patients come to uh, to my office and they have they um, have been told they have sciatic pain. We find out that actually no, it stems from your spine and nerves being compressed up in your spine instead. And it's the same thing. The sensation is exactly the same. That snapping, uh, burning, electrical sensation going in the back of your leg that is going all the way down to your foot, and it's so uncomfortable and it hurts every day and you can't do things that you like to do. And HFX is perfect for that kind of pain. Can someone with a pacemaker have HFX? Yes, you can. Um, this, some, sometimes you need to have a conversation with your cardiologist just to make sure that there's nothing that prohibits that. But uh, most companies, uh, um, I would say uh, ICDs or pacemakers, can can be used together with with this um, it, a little bit conditional but in location also where are you planning on stimulating is it close to where that other pacemaker is placed but usually lower back uh, would be fine so i know we are coming up on the hour so i'm just going to get in one more question yeah so we have an attendee who wants to hear just a little bit more about how limited you are between the trial and the implants, and if you can still drive. Yes, so between the trials, so after the trial leads comes out, you will go back to your normal baseline pain, unfortunately, because as long as the stimulator is not there, it's not gonna function. So maybe for a day or two, you're still gonna have some benefit, but then the pain will return to baseline. You're gonna to have to wait for that implant, um, which is, like I said, usually it's like within a month or so. Um, and if you can drive with the, the device in, yes, absolutely. Uh, since you don't have that tingling sensation going down your leg, there's no risk for any uh, nerve compromise with this device. You can definitely drive with it. Well, thank you so much for answering all those really great questions. And thank you to the audience for your participation. Before we end, I do want to share some resources and next steps for everyone on this call. Next slide, please. So what our current patients love with HFX is you have dedicated lifelong support. So you'll have a local care team who will attend your appointments related to this treatment option, answer your questions, and help you through each step. And then you'll have a coach who will be personally assigned to you and they'll provide any long-term remote support whenever you need it. And you'll have an access team and they'll be there to provide support throughout the insurance approval and coverage process. Next slide. The next step to take after this webinar is to see if you qualify for this treatment option. You can find out by answering a few questions on the assessment at neverhfx.com and we'll also send you this link in an email after the event. From there, we'll provide a discussion guide so you know what questions to ask your doctor about this treatment option. And we'll also provide a tool to find a physician experienced with HFX in your area if your doctor doesn't offer this treatment option. Dr. Harstrom is in the surrounding Seattle, Washington area and is listed on the finder if you'd like to see her for a consultation. Again, thank you for everyone on the call, Dr. Harstrom and Alvado for your time today. I hope you all enjoy the event and have a great rest of your evening. Thank you. Have a good evening.